This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to the Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast since 2015. I am back here in the very fine and fancy studios of Pod Populi, podcast for the people. I am at the one in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, if you want to guess what season it is, it is um, dreadfully hot. So I know you can say that it's Florida all the time, but right now. And there's critters everywhere. So Florida's like Jurassic Park. Anyway, we have a lot of traditions on this podcast. I've been revisiting them, a lot of them recently. Um, some of our best bits, some of our best segments, some of our best uh, ongoing routines. And what, here today we're going to do one of my favorite ones. We haven't done this in probably a year and a half. I've been waiting for the right combination of people. So I try and raise questions on this podcast. I try and give you answers on this podcast. And I'm always shocked at the people. I guess I'm not shocked. There's a group of people who really has better answers to life's questions and love's questions than just about anybody else. I have had dating coaches on here. I've had relationship experts on here. I've had matchmakers on here. I've had authors on here. I've had celebrities. Nobody's going to give the answers like my three guests today are going to give the answers. Um, so I'm going to introduce them and they're going to say how old they are, which I normally don't do with my guests. Kendall. Hi, I'm 10 years old. Brooklyn. Hi, I'm 11. And Nathan. I'm 16. So we have 10, 11, and 16. Okay. I don't think we ever really grow beyond fourth graders when it comes to relationships. I think everything, I think we're sort of fixed in stone. Um, Give me your first thought when I say the word. I'm I'm going to start with you, Kendall. Boys. Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. What does interesting mean? Like... They have their own, like, different personalities than girls, kind of. Yeah. Like that. Is that good or bad? There's, like, good differences and bad differences, Give me, of. Give me a bad difference. Like. Or give me a good difference. A good difference? Like, so, like, let's say a boy and a girl are, like, friends, right? Yeah. They're friends. They have a lot of in, in common. Uh-huh. And, like, they have something interesting, like, that they do together. Right. Kind of. And that's good, but they go about it differently. Yeah, exactly. Like, differently from other people. Yeah, that's right. Brooklyn? Boys, one word. Annoying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We got a bunch of 52-year-olds listening to this podcast. I'm like, yep, that's the way it is. Uh, Why are they annoying? I mean... Some of them are just a whole nother story, I guess. Yeah. And you know when they get to that point where they're just like... A <sighs> are they messy? Yes. Tough yes. to have around. They mess it up. Are they loud? Some. Do they say stupid things? Yes. What oh, kind yeah. of stupid things? A bunch of... A bunch. <laughs> Would you rather uh, at this age have a party and it was just you and your girlfriends or if there's boys and girls, does that sometimes make it better or worse? Me and my besties. Boys are, f- uh, I mean, you can have boys at parties. Sometimes it makes it better. Sometimes it doesn't. But like if it's just, if it's like a random f- Tuesday and you want to have a party, then definitely just my friends. <laughs> no boys. True. That's what all no comes boys. out of random Tuesday. Uh, Nathan, you're slightly a bit older. I believe you're probably at the point now where you don't find girls completely annoying, right? Yeah, yeah. You like girls now? Yeah, grown a little bit, yeah. <laughs> so to give me the give me the best thing about girls now at sixteen years old. I feel like I feel like they're really personable. Like you can tell a lot about a girl just based on like when you first meet her. Like just that initial um like meeting, you can tell a lot about them, like what kind of person they are, how you'll get along with them. And that's that's like a really important part. Yeah, they're girls. they're a lot more open and honest and vulnerable at, at a younger age than than the boys are, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, boys just want to be like, this is how I am, and this is what I like, and whatever. The, the girls are a little more interesting, which I guess appeals to you now because they're they trigger a part of in your brain that you're like, my guy friends don't do this. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like 
it's interesting to see how you go well with people like your friends and even your guy friends and mm-hmm. like girlfriends to like see how you guys interact with each other and how you guys bond with each other and how you guys like share different moments. Is it tough to get a girl's attention if you like her? Uh, yeah, sometimes because I feel like now everyone's a little more reserved. Um, but I think it's important to like have the confidence to like, like meet someone and do something about it. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, you must like some, you like YouTubers, you like yeah, movie stars. Yeah. Are there any boys that you're like, Oh, he's actually pretty cool. I wish that guy was in my class. Is there anybody? Go ahead. Like celebrity crush? Yeah, yeah like celebrity oh. crush. Oh, is that what we're getting at? Yeah, celebrity no, I, crush. I don't have a celebrity crush. Oh, uh, well, wait till you're 11. Oh. <laughs> She's 11. I know. She doesn't have one. She might. Um, yeah. So you learn a lot about your sister here on The Great Love Debate. <laughs> yeah, um, because... Um, so at 11, who's your celebrity crush? Well, you both um, probably have not even heard of The Summer I Turned Pretty. Uh, I've heard of the summer I turned pretty. There's what about you, Nathan? I haven't heard of it. No. Uh, and well, there's a boy in there. Uh huh. Oh boy. It's a boy. And it's how? In Jeremy. How old is he? Like, I don't know. Six, Hold on. Let, know. Me, let me look this up. Okay. While she's looking it up, is there a boy on television or on YouTube that you're like, oh, that's a cool guy? I wish he's my... not a celebrity crush, yeah. but I just really like him. I kind of want to be friends with him. Who? Ryan Trahan. And who's that? He's a YouTuber. He's a YouTuber. What does he do? <laughs> Fall off skateboards? No. No. What does a YouTuber do? Um, he like he released his own candy brand. Well, um, I could he, do that. He... I mean, what is that? <laughs> That's not a talent. I know, but it's like really good. It's it's plant based, no artificial flavors, called Joyride. Okay, so that makes him that makes him like nice. No, he's really like really funny. Like, oh, he is. Really funny. He's nice. Okay. He, okay. I'm I, ready. All right, Go chime ahead. back in. Um so, there's an actor that plays Jeremiah Fisher in The Summer I Turned Pretty. Mm-hmm. Hold on. It's coming back up, but... How old were you guys when you got phones? I literally just got my phone in December. Okay. On Christmas, actually. And I get it when I'm 11. So, 11 is the Almost line there. for phone? 11 is the line. What, is that about when you got a phone? Uh, no. Got we, you got a phone really yeah, early. Yeah, we started, like, way early. Uh, oh, yeah. But, when he was six. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think it was too much of a problem. Like, yeah. Well, they now, you, now you're able to look stuff up. All right. Well, we'll get back to you, um, Nathan. Who's who's the girl that you're like? You know what? That's a pretty cool girl. I wish she celebrity. I yeah. Um, YouTuber celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like to really know someone, you have to meet them like in person. Like if you say these from like TV shows, at least at least yeah. from my perspective, a lot of like, times you're you're judging the character or the public person. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um. But someone, maybe Ana de Armas, you know, from... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's from the... She's, she was starred in... She's, she was in name? a Bond movie. She was in Knives Out. Knives, Knives Out, that's Knives it, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She seems really oh gosh, sweet. James Bond she movie. seems really, yeah. really good. Yeah, good I choice. She's a little old for you, but yeah. she's... Uh, <laughs> she's <laughs> How old is she? She's beautiful. No she's idea. 35. I don't know. Maybe. She oh, looks, neither. She looks young, though. Yeah, no. She seems delightful. Um, so... We talk a lot about in this podcast, we give her a lot of credit because she deals with the angst and the pain of relationships and friends and boys and girls or whatever. Are you guys Taylor Swift fans? Oh, yeah. Is everybody a Taylor Swift fan? No. No. So there's some people who don't like Taylor Swift. Uh I don't think he is. You don't like Taylor Swift? (laughs) I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a Taylor Swift hater, but I don't have as big of a... Yeah, I'm not as big of a cult following as other people are. You like Olivia Rodrigo? No. Uh, Sabrina not. Carpenter, yes. Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso Girl. Yeah, I I he feel like Espresso Girl. Yeah, I feel like Taylor's just a little bit like overrated. overrated. Like there's, okay. there's uh, we will sorry. not we will not tolerate yes, um, Taylor hate here at the Great Debate. Sorry, but sorry. but so what is it you think about Taylor Swift that makes her so popular, especially among groups of girlfriends? Where if you go to a Taylor Swift concert, everybody knows every word. Everybody yep. is not only singing the songs, but they are feeling the songs. What is it about 100%. Taylor? Why is um, that? I know exactly. So this is what Taylor does to a bunch of people. Also considering Taylor's new album. So Taylor Taylor tells stories in her songs that are super relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. You can feel her pain. You can, you can feel her pain. 100%. You know she has a red scarf somewhere. Yeah, probably. And <laughs> Swifties, oh, as who we are, there's this thing called Easter eggs where you find secrets in songs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. 
From the start, Swifties knew that the Torture Post Department, her new album, was based on a couple of her boyfriends, mm-hmm. ex boyfriends, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. The British guy, and then the uh, the, Brit- the 1975 guy, right? Oh, right now she's dating. Travis now she's dating Travis Kelsey, but before the two boys. Oh, okay. I see. I'm a Swifty. I know these things. <laughs> um, right, and so we knew where. So it was trying to figure out what which guy was this, and what is she trying to Correct. say? Correct yeah. stuff like that. And then one of the songs, which I think was a surprise for some Swifties, was that the song So High School from the Torture Post Department, the anthology, mm-hmm. was actually about Travis Kelsey, which oh. was a surprise to most Swifties. Oh, I haven't heard yeah. that. Yeah. Now, she does a really good job that she is not, she's even not afraid now, and she's mm-hmm. probably 34 now. She is. Yeah. To sing 22. As enthusiastically as she was then, or to sing um, "You Belong to Me," where she she's no longer the the she's the cheer captain now. She's not that, <laughs> but to put herself back into a time where she understands what it was like for uh-huh. the Definitely. boy to be mean to her, or your friends not to be, or, or to be a certain age in time, and that's what I think gives her such appeal. If you're if you're nine or you're ninety. Mm-hmm. It all everybody kind of goes through these points in life at some point, Definitely. right? That like yeah, are yeah. stressful, calm. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. Um, all right, I got, I got to take a quick too. break because we got to pay for things like uh, Taylor Swift um, albums around here. There you go. I am with uh, Kendall, Brooklyn, Nathan. We are breaking down boys, girls, men, women, and the meaning of life. We will be back right after this. And we are back. So when um, when you walk into a new, you're going to go into fifth grade. Yes. And you're going to go to the sixth grade? Mm-hmm. And when you go in uh, to, to a new class or new school, yep. are you staying in the same school? No. So you're going to a new school. I'm mm-hmm. staying in the same Do school. Do you look at who the boys are first as a, almost like a protective mechanism, or do you look at the girls and be like, who do I want to be my friends? How do you size that up? Like how to like How do you walk into friends? a room and be like, who am I going to try and be friends with? Because girlfriends are going to have to support mm-hmm. you through a lot of stuff. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to school with a bunch of my friends. So first I have a bunch of my friends coming with me, so I don't need to like move really quickly. So when I walk into a classroom, I make sure I look around the room first. What girls are grouped up, what boys are grouped up, and then people that are just alone. Mm -hmm. I can tell that when the group of people probably looking their best, wearing a bunch of makeup, stuff like that, are the popular girls. Mm -hmm. Known was very popular at their last school, and then all the boys grouped together are kind of like class clowns or like just people to be there to be there. Um, class clown gets attention. Oh, a bunch. That's what it's mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Yep. And then the people that are just sitting alone are normally just calm, don't like to speak a lot, stuff like that. And I go for someone that's really fun and will not leave me bored. Well, because that's a good thing in life. If you're when you get married someday, if they're fun and they don't leave you bored in a good way, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Nathan, yep. when you walk into a, a new room, a situation, a new class, are you sizing up the, the boys, the girls, the whole environment? How do you find your your click? So usually in a class, when I go into a new class, I look for friends that are already in there so I can like yes. sit with them. Yeah. 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 But um if there's no one in there that I really know or I want to branch out to other kids, it usually happens when you get sat down with like your partner um, that's going to be like your desk partner. Um, Which is a big, it's a relationship. Like yeah, you are almost, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Like you may have him for the whole school year and you may not. Who you sit next to, and it's random most of the time, yeah. can affect all kinds of things. When you guys Definitely. go off to college, who you just randomly get as a roommate can change everything. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's all circumstances and timing and life. And, you know, sometimes by being forced to be with somebody or forced to be near somebody, you get to know them beyond what you think of them personally. Uh-huh. When I first sat down with my table mates for the first half, we became, like, really close, which is crazy. I became, Same. I became close with, like, a bunch of my like best friends now just because I was sitting at a table with them. Mm-hmm. Good. That matters. Uh, Nate, you're going to be a uh, sophomore? Junior. Junior. Are you driving yet? Yes, I am. Oh, God. He's a good driver. Yeah. Um, uh, have you gone? Do you guys have dances and stuff? Yeah, 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 we do. Um, we had homecoming freshman year. Oh, my gosh. Do you sure. remember your first girl that you had to ask out? Yes, I do. Did she reject um, you? No, she didn't. <laughs> She didn't. See, that's she good. Didn't. That's yeah. really good. I, um, Is she cute? 
Shh. Is she? <laughs> yeah. well, well, let me ask you that. D- does it matter if she's cute? No. Why? It just matters if you like her. If good she's for a good you. Personality. Mm-hmm. Does it matter if the boys are cute? A little bit. No. <laughs> That sounds like a double I, it, standard. To me, it matters about the personality. and Definitely. You're right, because you age, and who knows who's going to be cute long term. Yep. But yeah, asking a girl out is the most terrifying experience Definitely, ever. or asking because anyone. not only there's a chance in school that she's going to say no and reject you, mm-hmm. then there's a chance that everybody in school Makes is going to you. know that she's going to do it. It's, it's, it's terrible. And a lot of guys, Brian Howie, never quite get over that because you're mm-hmm. always worried, oh, like, yeah. am I going to oh, be? And yeah. this carry your, your early experiences with how things go, even in, in friendship interactions, really does affect itself down down the line, right? Yeah. You can see how that could happen, Definitely. right? Definitely. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, have you gotten mad at friends, uh, boys or girls, and then ever been like, you know what, I was wrong, and apologize and, and make things, uh, and patch things up? More you, with girls. More with girls. What happens then? Yeah. Um, because, like... They understand more. They that's, understand that's the, the uh, crazy nature of the of the female brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, like mine, yeah. my my like. It's good that you're aware of it at a young age. My past friend group from the from fifth grade, our friend group had a bunch of fights. Like I'm not joking, like a bunch, and it was so hard at sometimes. It it's so hard to say sorry when you know you're right. Mm-hmm. And my group chat's just, just you crazy. know, some people like are sensitive, and uh, it's just a whole another story. But girls definitely understand more than boys will, because boys will make fun of you. Yes, they will. That's again how we get your attention. Exactly. Yeah, everything's about attention as as a guy because mm-hmm. you guys are paying attention to each other and you are now you're in your phones and you're listening to Taylor Swift and you're not paying any attention to the boys. That never quite mm-hmm. goes away. So we have to act silly. Sometimes stupid mm-hmm. for get you to notice us, and sometimes the silly. Sometimes we pull your hair. Oh, you know, or boys do stuff like that. They do stupid things because they think if I get her attention, then maybe I get a chance to talk to her. Is mm-hmm. that right? Maybe? Yeah, Probably. yeah. That's why when you um, first asked out that girl, you had to like hit her with a water balloon or something. Right? Oh. Not exactly, but oh. yeah, you know, you got to kind of act silly yeah. and, and do that. Um, when you see adults together. Is there a way you can tell if adults are getting along well or not? Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. How? Like, if they're, like, holding hands and, like... Definitely. Look like they, like, like each other like this. Um, you kind of know, but if they, like... Like, if they don't get along, kind of... They're mm-hmm. probably, if they're, like, fighting a lot. They're probably, like, not holding hands. They're probably looking around. You can tell by the body language, right? Definitely. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Body language can really tell you something about, like, a relationship. Like, Definitely. especially when people are walking. Like, if they're kind of, like, leaning into each other, that's, like, a sure sign that, like, this person enjoys the other person's company. Uh-huh. And, like, say when you're, like, sitting down at a restaurant, when they're, like, looking at the other person, they're, like, charmed by them. So exactly. I feel yeah. like you can really of, tell a lot by, like, observing. One of my um, worst habits... As a, as a man, and I'm not sure I'm completely 100% better than this, is first of all, I'm from New York, and we uh-huh. tend to walk a certain way. We walk fast. And secondly, yeah. as a man, you're, your legs are longer. You're going to walk fast in front of you. You've got to always be aware of where – don't walk 10 feet in front of her. Uh-huh. Just don't. No, you got to sit – you got to right beside her. Right beside her, right? Even if she's really slow, you got to – You got to slow down. Yeah, of course. I'm so bad. I'm getting better because I'm aware of it, but I might find myself like speeding up, slowing down, whatever. Men do that all the time. It's bad, right? It's bad manners. Mm-hmm. So you even notice that. She walks really slow. <laughs> and that's I mean, what – In school, I walk fast, but at home, I'm just slow. So you're capable of walking fast. You just choose not to. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a tip for you. Don't ever walk more than... Don't even walk in front of her at all. Don't walk behind her, too. Mm. Don't walk behind her. Walk beside her. Walk correct. You can maybe be a little bit in front of her. I might have to look for wolves. There could be wolves, so I have to be on... You have to protect her. You have to take the side of the curb, too. So give... um, True. In the time we have here, give one piece of advice to the boys who are listening out there of what you would like them to do better. What should boys do better? (laughs) Kendall. Match my weird personality. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to match it or just accept it? Accept, accept and match. Like you have to be funny and weird. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you have to be interesting. Funny, weird, and interesting. All right, yeah, that's fair. Mostly weird. Brooklyn piece of advice for the boys. Don't make fun of people for what they did in the past. Be present. Definitely. That's good. 
That's like very this. good. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, you're last. Yeah. Like, don't bring up stuff that happened a long time ago that they're in. They, they feel bad about it. Yeah, yeah move uh-huh. on. Everybody, mm-hmm. that's a really good one. Yes, Nathan. This this is gonna sound a little cliche because you hear this all the time, but like genuinely be yourself because uh-huh. yeah. when you be yourself, you you show the person who you really are because like now we live with like a ton of social conformity where everyone wants to be just like everyone else. But I feel still it's important to be yourself and embrace your own personality because when everyone is being everyone else, Mm -hmm. it's like not fun and you don't get to know. Like I agree with you. I mean, it's, it's sometimes tough at a young age or even an old age to be yourself when you're not really even sure who yourself is. True. Yeah. But I think the more you try and the more you own who you are, the easier it is going to be to be comfortable with yourself. And then if you're comfortable with yourself, the people around you should theoretically be comfortable mm-hmm. with there you, you too. Exactly. Yeah. Is that right? Uh-huh. Yep. This is fun, you guys, right? I have a yeah. question for you. Yes, you do. Do you have a wife? No, but it's only, you know, two o'clock as we record this, so the day's not over. Mm, there you go. But Ooh. I'm getting there. Optimism. I'm close. Okay. Optimism. Advice, don't walk in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the very special someone in my life I will not walk in front of. I promise you that. Okay, um, you just started a podcast. What's it called? Remember when? Remember when? And you just started a podcast. What's that called? Beauty in a bottle. Beauty promise, in a bottle. I promise it's not like oh my god, guys. There we this, go. This um, is like so. Nathan, sounded. you got to start a podcast too. Yeah, yeah maybe Nathan. we'll see. Uh, it should, it should, it this, should be called girls. Girls. Uh, okay. <laughs> How many girls are? Like, how many girls? Yeah. No fear of rejection. Uh, this is fun. As far as us, like, share, follow. Please review this podcast. Your reviews now and always mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. Shoot us an email at greatlovedebate yeah, at gmail.com. Just, yeah, let us yeah, know if you want us back. back. Yeah, we don't know if you want us back. If you've got comments, uh, fan mail, um, or you are uh, the star of what's the show? What I do this summer? What's that show called? Summer I Turn Pretty. Summer I Turn Pretty. If you're yeah. the guy and you're listening, um, we'll get you in touch with yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah, guys. Exactly. We're just, we're just um, like that. Go to greatlovedebate.com for all the fun stuff that's happening and coming. Because as always, at The Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time.